I'm going to digress here for a few moments if you'll bear with me. I was just digging through my drawer where I have many pairs of vice grips of all different uh, shapes and sizes and uh, uh, I got the sizes that I need up here but as I was doing that I was thinking well I bought a bunch of these last year at, a, at an auction they're all brand new still in the package and uh, they are made in USA I think they were a couple of years old and somebody died and I was fortunate enough to be able to buy them but uh, all of the new uh, vice grips are now made in China I think it says Cooper Industries or something on it or Irwin, maybe it's Irwin now, and they're just a big old conglomerate that probably also makes cheesecake and brassiers. And uh, maybe the quality is okay, but I'm old-fashioned. I like things made in America. You know, China will not need their 100 million man army to take over the United States. All they got to do is foreclose on some of the loans. Okay, that's enough of that. I'm sorry. Uh, I have drilled the holes in one piece, vice gripped them together, and now I'm going to proceed to take the wonderful invention here of the uh, transfer punch, which I've shown you before, and we'll transfer all four of those holes, hitting this with a hammer, and then I'll take the uh, this piece over to the drill press and drill them out 13 64 and then I'll tap them. Then it's ready to screw together. And it's starting to shape up now, so you can at least see what the thing looks like. Got a fairly good alignment here with my half laps. Never good enough, you know how it is. If you're a perfectionist, you want it to be perfect, and few things are perfect in this world. I got a little overly anxious there, and I'm kind of set up the engine to see what the actual thing is going to look like. So this is the first time that I've seen it and that you've seen it. Uh, Never mind these ugly screws here. I am going to put some proper screws in there. And for that matter, I'll probably fill them and hide them. But uh, there it is with the cylinder head on and the flywheel setting in its uh, general place. And there's the, uh, the crank. So the whole thing is about 15 or 16 inches high. I have to make a base yet, of course. I'll make a temporary wooden base and get the thing running because you get anxious when you get near the end, you know, to get the thing running. And then we go back and uh, do some of the fine tuning. There'll be a, <clears throat> a nut here and a spring to hold all of that in. Have to make the shaft yet. By the way, if you don't have one of these optimizers, and you're over 40 years old, you better get one. And they're available in different focal lengths. That's the number three. But I'd be uh, sitting in a rocking chair if I didn't have that thing. This is the surface that the uh, cylinder oscillates on, so it needs to be true. And I've got about an inch and a half cutter here. And I'm going to take a couple passes off that, take off as little as possible, but I would like to get it trued up as best I can. But notice the setup here. I'm on a couple parallels because of this hub down here. Uh, when you make a setup like this, always make sure that your parallels or your packing is directly underneath where you're clamping. So the work does not flex. Also, try to always get your uh, T-bolts in perfectly uh, vertical position, not cocked. And you don't need to over-tighten this uh, on a setup like this. I'm taking a very light cut. Uh, if you over-tighten it, you just get yourself into trouble. But you do not want it to come loose either. This is a carbide cutter that I picked up someplace. I don't usually uh, do much with carbide. I certainly don't buy it because it costs so much, but this was a used one. And it's the only cutter that I have that is relatively large in diameter without using a fly cutter. And I'm not going to show this entire operation. That's enough. I'm slowly making progress on this thing. 
I've mounted it on a temporary wooden base. We got this uh, surface machined as you saw the other day. And I've got the shaft in there on which this will pivot or oscillate. We got a spring here and a handle and a couple washers and all the other hardware I need. And I've got the uh, uh, flywheel temporarily mounted. Had to do some machining on it. It had, it had a tapered hole in it. So rather than bore it out, I tapered the end of this shaft, which was no easy job, by the way. And I've uh, still got to cut the shaft off. But... Uh, as you can see, we're making a little progress here and just trying to keep you up to date. I won't make the final base until after I have uh, got the thing running. I forgot to mention that I installed the needle bearings in here. There's two of them, one on each side. And now I'm turning my attention to the piston. By the way, I intend to remake this whole uh, crank part is way too thin and out of proportion so that's going to be needing a new pattern and uh, some work but we'll get to that later on. So this is the piston or it's going to be the piston and there will be no piston rings or packing or o-rings or anything like that it's just a close fit that's good enough for who it's for and I'm using this plastic that came from my brother Jan and Cody Wyoming and this is two and a half or this is about three inches in diameter, so I got to turn it down a little bit. And I've already cut off a piece, drilled it, reamed it, faced it on both sides, and uh, this, of course, will be going on the bottom of the uh, cylinder. I have put a collar on there, or a bushing, I guess you call it a collar, and I put a roll pin in there, so that's going to hold it in place on that side of the rod, and then on the other side, just got a big flat washer and a jamming nut and I'll Loctite that on probably. Now I'm going to turn that down on the lathe. This is the end of the piston rod where I've got the collar and uh, the reason for that uh, undercut there was that's where I ended my thread. It's a half 13 thread and I did uh, thread it by the single point method uh, down to about three-fourths depth and then finished it with a half 13 die and that way I knew the thread would be straight. I'm going to turn this piston to diameter on my little hardened speed lathe and the reason I'm doing it on this lathe is that I do have a collet set up here and this is an extremely accurate lathe and I know this to be running perfectly true and I want this uh, piston to be concentric with the piston rod so I'm turning it on the rod and will never remove it from the rod and uh, consequently that's why I'm doing it here and I'm taking it down to 2.508 inches which is the diameter of the bore Now, if this center hole is not concentric with the uh, little inset that we've got on here when it goes into the cylinder, uh, and then this being concentric, we are going to have a binding as the piston moves up and down. And that's why I'm going to such uh, care to try to prevent that from happening. I would like a nice free fit uh, through this hole but uh, no air or steam escaping and I want a good fit here with perfect concentricity. And here we go. This is probably about 10 minutes worth of turning and I'm going to take a series of small passes. I don't like the way those um, plastic chips wrap around there but at least they won't cut me. I'm using a round nose tool. Pull all that mess off there. We're going to find that we got a pretty nice cut. I'm going to have to cut those chips off of there. Alright, we'll return when this is turned down to diameter. 